Okay, I don't know if I'm the only one that thought this, but right before the big reveal in the finale, when they were talking about He Who Remains, I kind of wanted it to be Kevin Feige. <laughs> it would have been perfect. But you know what? You know what? What we got, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen. your boy will and yes this is it this is the finale of season one of marvel studios loki this is a spoiler review as all of these have been you should know this by now hopefully you've watched the episode before you're checking this out but if you are checking this out regardless thank you so much for watching this and watching all these reviews i've done not only for loki but for wandavision and for falcon and winter soldier i hope you've enjoyed them so we're going to jump right into the spoiler review i hope that you love the finale as much as i did a lot of series i will start off with this a lot of series do this where they say this is going to change what we know about so-and-so forever. And I gotta admit, this is the first one where I can legitimately say, yes, this has changed what the MCU is going forward. It really has. Because the way that the episode ends with the birth of a new multiverse and the start of potentially a multiversal war is huge in the scope of the entire MCU. Whereas with WandaVision and Falcon Winter Soldier, they were very much continuations of characters that we've gotten to know and love through the movies and expanded on their abilities and powers and positions in the ongoing universe where I think Loki as a series was a lot more self-contained unto its own self but had greater ramifications going forward and I think the other two series have had up to this point. So the episode does pick up where we left off in the last episode uh, with Loki and Sylvie approaching this castle or citadel at the end of time once they were able to subdue Elioth and enchant him in order to let them pass. As they're making their way through this this castle, I'm just going to say it's a, I'm gonna say it's a castle, we do get a brief altercation with Miss Minutes who offers them a chance to kind of be reinserted into the timeline where there won't be variants and won't make any major change to the timeline. Of course, they want to, they, they, they don't care. They, they're here on a mission. They're here to find the person who created the TVA and who's in charge of it. And Miss Minutes does refer to that person as he who remains. But the reveal of who it was, I don't want to say I called it, but a lot of people kind of called it and it makes total sense. And we do get our reveal of He Who Remains and it is in fact Jonathan Majors who has already been confirmed to be portraying Kang the Conqueror in Ant-Man and the Wasp's Quantumania. And he's clearly going to be not just one version of Kang, he's going to be multiple versions of Kang. If you're unsure of who Kang the Conqueror is, it is a, it's a character from the comics, it's one of the Avengers' greatest villains. It's, his real name is Franklin Richards, and he was from the 31st century. He ends up going back in time to try to be a hero, and ends up, through some misfortunes and things like that, evolves into the version of Kang the Conqueror that we know in the comics. But his, he's also taken on multiple multiple names throughout the years in different comics. He has gone by the name of Immortus, he's gone by Iron Lad, and in this particular version of him, he is he who remains, is the last person at the end of time, basically. He is the one who created the TVA. He is the one who created a single timeline, whereas he explains and gives us a really good origin story for Kang and the TVA. There was a war, a multiversal war, with different variant versions of Kang. And he alludes to a lot more versions of him that are far worse than him. And that he was the last one left standing and consolidated the entire timeline into one timeline. So he offers them a choice. They can kill him and take over the TVA, maintaining his work, maintaining the timeline as it's as it is. Or they can just kill him and allow the timeline to explode into this new multiverse, but would unleash all the other versions of him. 
the the far worse version onto the entire universe or multiverse in this in this matter. It's a really big choice that surprisingly leads to an altercation between Sylvie and Loki. Sylvie is ready to just kill Kang. We're just going to call him Kang. Ready to kill Kang and just be done with it. While Loki believes what he's saying. He, he believes that there is, by doing this, by making this rash decision, it is going to cause something far, far worse. I gotta say off the bat, Jonathan Majors, perfect. Perfect casting. His performance as He Who Remains, it was very eccentric, you know, eccentric and funny, but he he's clearly a being who has lived a very long time, especially by himself at the end of time. And while trying to maintain some semblance of order, yes, is it is it cruel and has he done some things that he's not necessarily proud of or or things that would be viewed as a hero would do or something like that. I think I'm, I'm paraphrasing how he put it, but basically it's very much a, a mirror to a lot of what our Loki in the series has been going through with this whole dissection of his character and what he really wants and who he really is. While Sylvie views Loki's decision to try to stop her as he just wants power, he just wants a throne. Loki's like, no, he just wants Sylvie to be okay. God, Tom Hiddleston does such a good job in this series. I gotta say, like, I, he, this is probably why, and I'll explain this a little later, why it might be recency bias, but I feel like Loki is probably the best of the series that we've gotten so far. I'll get into that in a little bit. I want to get through the rest of the basic breakdown of the episode. Um, we, there is a brief reunion between Mobius and Ravana Renslayer. I finally said her full name by the last episode. Yes. Um, where she's given some information by He Who Remains, thanks to Miss Minutes, which causes her to decide to basically leave and go off someplace. Um, so we will be, I'm assuming, seeing her in, a, in season two, which they did confirm at the end of the episode. We will be getting a season two of Loki. Ravana leaves. Mobius is left there basically with everyone else to watch the birth of a new multiverse. Because after the altercation between Sylvie and Loki, Sylvie plants a big old wet one on Loki long enough to distract him to kick him out of the throne room using a temp pad, leaving her alone with he who remains. At this point though, we do start seeing the branches from the timeline hitting the red line. So it's already the point of no return. And by Sylvie's choice, she kills he who remains. And she's just kind of left there. Left there getting what she wanted. She finally brought about the end to the person that has caused her so much pain, but she doesn't seem happy about it. And that's what usually ends up with most stories of vengeance is that you're just, that you're just kind of now what? And that's kind of where we're left off. As the camera pans out, we start seeing the branches continuing to spread and to grow and Loki back in the TVA completely kind of heartbroken because of what Sylvie did, her choice to expel him. And he goes looking for looking for Mobius and B-15 and he encounters them. And it's really interesting. He's just he's just expounding all this information about what he saw and Mobius is trying to get him to calm down. And then that's when the real shocker of the episode hits. It's the last few moments where Mobius asks Loki, who are you? Like, what division you're from? As if he doesn't know who Loki is. Loki, shocked, pans over, and where once was a statue of the timekeepers, there is a singular figure standing there, and it is Kang, in his comic book outfit. Now, granted, it's not the purple one. It's a stone statue, but you can tell the design. And this is definitely not the same TVA that Loki was at before. So that's where the episode ends. <laughs> it ends with the multiverse fully formed, continuing to spread and branching off into multiple different realities. Somewhat madness, if you will, <laughs> that this multiverse has become. I'm 
being giddy because it's funny. So this episode, I really like, obviously, based off my reactions to it. It wrapped up a lot of the major storylines for season one up pretty well. We got a full arc with Sylvie to the point where she got her revenge, so to speak. I think Jonathan Majors was so good. I've never seen Lovecraft Country. It's on HBO. I should watch it. I just haven't watched it. But if this is just a taste of what he can give us with different personas or different versions of the same character, I'm all down for it. And I think that's brilliant. Having the entire multiversal war that was alluded to you know, at the beginning of the series, it's crazy to think that the entire war was just Kang feuding with himself and to the point where one was left. But he didn't say that he destroyed them. He just said he was the only one left. He consolidated everything in one timeline. The reason I think Loki is also in an alternate timeline now, besides the fact the immediate changes, Mobius not knowing who Loki is, same thing with B-15, is, and the, you know, the fact that there's one statue in Kang, is because the timeline be began to branch while they were having this sort of conversation, um, Loki, Sylvie, and He Who Remains were having this discussion, having this conversation. The timeline, the, the timeline had already began to branch off. So when Sylvie activated the Tem Pad, I don't think she knew that she was kicking him to an alternate reality. So season two already has an inline story going for it. Loki's in an alternate reality. Sylvie's now by herself. What does that mean for her? Well, Loki's probably going to go searching for him and his own, the timeline he was kind of in already. Like I said, all the, all the, the actors have done a fantastic job. Owen Wilson has been great as Mobius. He became a fan favorite. He was my favorite. I was sad when I thought he died. I was glad he was back. And now we have this, uh, another version of him, a slightly altered version of him, but are we going to get, I hope we get back to our, Universe. I hope Loki gets back to the the universe he was in. Um, but this does this does find a way to have this newer Loki kind of have his own adventure outside of the existing MCU timeline, which is the series has done a really good job with that. Have, letting this version of Loki have these adventures, have this growth as a character, and really broken down to his core to the point where he is a far different version of the character than we got even in the movie timeline. Even with all the different versions that we've encountered throughout the series, which the series has done a wonderful job giving us all these variant versions of Loki, and now they're taking the concept of these variant versions or alternate universe versions and applying it to Kang, giving us the ability to have Jonathan Majors pop up in multiple different projects. He can pop up in Spider-Man No Way Home and it would make total sense because it can be just a different version of Kang. So the version that we're going to get in Ant-Man and Wasp Quantum Mania is going to be far different and probably far more dangerous than what we got here. I love the, that the eccentric version of Kang, He Who Remains, Immortus, whatever you want to call him, that we got him in this introduction because it's a it's it's the version of him that has lived the longest. It's the version of him that has seen the bloodshed. And is basically, how would you act if you were basically by yourself for a millennia? You'd probably lose your mind a little bit. And that, I think his performance was fantastic. What do I expect from season two? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Like, when, when will we get season two? Will it be before or after Multiverse of Madness? Because I believe Multiverse of Madness comes out next year. So it's possible, yeah, this might be, season two will probably have some sort of ripple effect from, you know, No Way Home and Multiverse of Madness, and that will completely change what season two is going to be. Obviously, Loki's going to look for Sylvie. He has a connection with Sylvie, and their connection is a big part of season one. So I feel like season two, they're going to explore it even more, especially with this sort of betrayal that probably Loki feels that Sylvie did and how Sylvie feels Loki didn't have her, have her back. It's very possible that that's going to be the major through line for season two. It just makes me super fucking excited for the next few movies that are coming out because you don't have to necessarily have watched Loki to probably appreciate what you're going to get with Spider-Man No Way Home or Multiverse of Madness. But having those reference points 
and that continues story flesh out even more, it's probably going to make those movies just the impact of them feel so great. And like I said, the difference with Loki compared to what we got with WandaVision and Falcon Winter Soldier is that while WandaVision expanded Wanda's abilities, character, really cr set her up as the Scarlet Witch, which I even thought that was really what was leading into Multiverse of Madness. Damn if I was wrong, but I wasn't wrong about Kang being the one at the end. I wasn't wrong about that. How that series set that character up and how Falcon and Winter Soldier gave Sam the ability to flesh out the version of his character that we've all kind of known was there and really set him up for his future. I feel like Loki has a bigger impact. And I saw someone online compare how the MCU is setting up two distinct possibilities or two distinct storylines going forward. You have the multiversal storyline, which WandaVision, Loki, Spider-Man No Way Home, and Multiverse of Madness are clearly setting up the multiverse, while stuff like Falcon and Winter Soldier and even Black Widow is setting up kind of like a Dark Avengers. So I'm curious if those two dueling plot points, if they're going to collide in some sort of like, I don't know, maybe like a Secret Wars. I don't know. I feel like we're a few years from Secret War. I think you still need to do... If you're setting up Dark Avengers, and this is just speculation for the entire MCU right now, but if you're setting up Dark Avengers, I feel like you're also going to set you're going to set up like a Young Avengers. And I don't... While we're not getting Season 2 of WandaVision or Falcon Winter Soldier as of yet, we do know that we're getting a Season 2 of Loki, which I am thoroughly excited for, especially after a very... Well done, Season 1. Season 1 of Loki, I gotta say, like I said, the reason I feel like it's stronger than the other two, to a degree, I love all three series. Let's just put that out there right now. But I feel like Loki had such a bigger impact. While WandaVision I love for the, the weirdness and the quirkiness of the stylization of the episodes and how... It dealt with grief and processing your grief and anger and finding a way to move forward. I think Loki gave me that weirdness that I love with WandaVision, but a much more deeper character study of Loki. And it was, it was very entertaining and fun to watch. And also really explore that character, I think, in a way that you, again, like a lot of what the series are doing, they're allowing you to explore these characters in different ways that the movies just wouldn't have time for. And the same with Falcon and Winter Soldier, how that dealt with really grounded real world issues, how I wasn't afraid to really touch on those topics and really explore those topics in a world where super beings exist. Also dealing with like trauma and, you know, post-traumatic stress and what defines you and things like that. All of these series have done such a good job. I just feel like Loki, for some reason, had more of a focus and a bigger impact, I feel, on the rest of the MCU as a whole. And again, it could be a recency bias thing, but as of right now, I think Loki is my favorite series that Disney Plus has done. I love all three series so far. The way that they're utilizing Disney Plus with the movies right now is working really well, at least for me as a fan. I feel like they've set up so many different things, so many different ways that characters can interact with each other now. It doesn't feel oversaturated. I was worried with this with the series and the movies, like they were gonna be too close to each other, but it doesn't feel oversaturated right now. And I think that's I think that's wonderful. Overall, Loki season one had a blast with it. Great character study of Loki. I love seeing all the different variations of it. I think Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston's character dynamics were fantastic. It was a cool little buddy cop thing. I liked Sylvie's character. Her character grew on me. I think she was fantastic as Sylvie. I'm looking forward to and hoping to see her again in season two. I'm very curious as to what we're going to get with Renslayer going forward. Are we going to get another version of Kang pop up in season two? We'll just have to wait and see. But... I hope you've enjoyed Loki as much as I have. If you have enjoyed the series, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on it. I really would love to have a conversation as to, you know, what are you expecting going forward? What are your hopes for season two? What were some of your favorite moments from season one? What were some of your least favorite moments? Comment down below. Let me know. I still think Alligator Loki is still MVP. He is. He's the GOAT. That is my... 
review of the finale of Loki season one. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? As always, thank you so much for watching this and all my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'm not sure if I'm going to do episode reviews for What If, which is the animated series that's coming out next. It's coming out next month in August. I might. I haven't decided yet. If I, if I do decide to do episode reviews for What If, subscribe to the channel. You'll get notifications for those. But I might do. I may do an overall season review for what if i'll have to see i'll have to see what i decide with that you can follow me on all the social media that's listed at the end of the video as well like share subscribe and all that fun stuff and as always until next time i will catch you later hey thanks for watching this video if you did like this video why not give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on my gorgeous little face right over there you can follow me on all the various social media platforms right below and last but certainly not least if you've got a few extra minutes why not check out one of the little videos floating right over here. Later!